some old experiences, some new experiences, all things that we're gonna be doing at our upcoming trip to Disney World that you might wanna check out for yours. Hello and welcome back to the Carousel of Douglas. Today we're gonna to be talking about some of the experiences that my wife and I are going to be having in our upcoming trip. We are leaving relatively shortly, like within the next couple weeks to head down to Disney World and we cannot wait. But we're gonna be doing some experiences that we would like to share with you and see if you are interested in them for your trip. Some of these things are things that we have done previously in the past and we're just really excited to do them again and some of them are totally and completely brand new to us so we're happy to have you come along with us so here we go we're going to start with our repeat or old disney experiences and we're going to break this down into two categories the first category is first time in a long time. And number one, I'm gonna start off with one that I know is gonna be controversial, especially when you hear my opinion about it. But the first thing that we're doing that we haven't done in a very long time, I'm talking at least 10 years, and that is eating at Tusker House. Now, I know a lot of people are like, why haven't you gone back to Tusker House? It's incredible. I will tell you, Michelle and I had some terrible experiences there. We had one experience at Tusker House where the buffet food was cold, it just didn't taste good, nothing, it really seemed like it was spiced right. We didn't know if they were just having an off day or something. And then we had a second experience which pretty much was the same exact thing. And it was like two visits in a row. And we we're like, look, we, we just can't. This is not for us. We know people love it. The breakfast especially, they talk about it. The character experience was just fine. It's just, the food just wasn't enough. And Michelle being a picky eater, it was really tough for her to find stuff that she actually liked. However, we are going back. And it's because they switched over to this new family style and we're really looking forward to trying out. This chimichurri steak sounds really, really great and I'm very excited to kind of like try this new way that they're doing it. This family style did really awesome things for Chef Mickey's according to everything I've read and we're also for Hollywood and Vine. So we're hoping that the same thing happens for Tusker House. And so we're actually scheduled to have a um, full on dinner there and I'm looking forward to that. And Michelle actually says she is too because she says that the, the new family style looks way, way more interesting. Also, we love the character interaction there. We had such a fabulous time with them that we cannot wait to go back and at least have great interaction with the characters again, get some hugs, you know, everything we need. And we're looking forward to that character meal. The next haven't done it in a long time thing is just something that we've just not scheduled in a very long time. And that is, we're gonna be eating at the Rose and Crown. Now I can tell you, the last time we ate at the Rose and Crown was 2009. It was for our five year wedding anniversary. And we were just like, hey, let's get reservations at the Rose and Crown. So we did. And that's literally the last time we ate there. There's nothing wrong with the place. It has an excellent selection of drinks and everything is nice, hearty English food. We just haven't been back since 2009. So we're looking forward to the Rose and Crown. And uh, that meal is something that I really like there. So we're going. You should really check that out. If you like that kind of hearty English food, you will love the Rose and Crown. Next on our list of things that we're looking forward to, and all these things just happen to be restaurants, is that we're gonna be eating at Mama Melrose's. Now, the situation at Mama Melrose's is that we were constantly going to either Sci-Fi Dine-In or the 50s Primetime Cafe or Hollywood Derby. Those three restaurants are on our list of favorites throughout the entire Walt Disney World resort system. However, Mama Milrose is also, because of the way that they've done this construction and how long they've been working on Galaxy's Edge, is in a weird place in the park and you don't think about it. And we're just like, wow, we haven't been to Mama Melrose's in a really long time. So we're gonna go check out Mama Melrose's as an experience for our meal and see how it's improved or if it stayed the same. We've never really had an issue with it. We just haven't gone back in a while. And so we're looking forward to Mama Melrose's. Also, it was, helpful that we weren't able to get a sci-fi dining reservation for the day that we ended up with that Mama Melrose's and I was like, oh, hey, why instead of sci-fi dining, I just go for a Mama Melrose reservation and so we're gonna do that. We have some friends joining us too for the meal, so it's gonna be great. If you don't know, Mama Melrose's is pretty good Italian fare. I like to say it's like plussed up selection like Olive Garden. 
except it's not with the Olive Garden quality. It's way better than Olive Garden. It just got that same kind of selection, those same kind of choices on the menu. But check out Mama Melrose's if you haven't had a chance. If you don't know where it is, it's actually back behind Pizza Rizzo and in that area if you go through the Muppet Courtyard and go through there. It's back in the back corner over there. Our final, well, I guess this is the restaurants we wish we've eaten at recently segment, is Whispering Canyon Cafe. We actually ate at Whispering Canyon Cafe by accident once. I know that sounds totally weird, but we were staying at the Wilderness Lodge and we were hungry and we're like, oh, there's a restaurant up here. And we thought it was a quick service and we walked up and this is before we really knew anything really about Wilderness Lodge and we're like, oh, hey, um, where we're looking to eat. And they're like, oh, this is a sit down restaurant. And we're like, okay. And we showed up and it was so much fun. We just haven't been back in a while because the Wilderness Lodge is a little bit out of the way. So it's kind of hard to get there, but we're eating at Whis Whispering Canyon. If you don't know, Whispering Canyon Cafe doesn't whisper. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. They have a lot of antics. If you ask for a drink too often, they'll bring you giant mason jars full of iced tea. And if you say, I need ketchup, like everybody in the room runs to your table with the bottles of ketchup. It's a lot of fun. You can opt out of the antics. The food is really good. It's kind of like these bottomless skillets. And the Whispering Canyon Cafe is just fun. It's a, it's a fun restaurant to eat at. And like I said, we ate there years ago by accident and we loved it. And we're looking forward to going back. So we're gonna be eating at Whispering Canyon Cafe. The next experiences that we are looking forward to are things that we've done before, but they were so good, we have to do them again. And we <laughs> literally just did them just recently. Number one is actually for us is going to be going to Oga's Cantina. Oga's Cantina is an amazing experience. I have this video that I put up about the total experience of Oga's Cantina, and it's doing really, really well on this channel. You should check that one out. Oga's Cantina is so much fun. It's really hard to get a reservation. You really have to do it 60 days out. And for this trip, I was actually able to get two separate reservations for Oga's Cantina. It's that much fun that we're doing it twice on this trip. Definitely gonna do an update to how the Oga's experience is. And we're gonna be glad to bring you along with us, but Oga's Cantina, if you have not seen it, you really should check it out. DJ Rex, little fun fact, he used to be the pilot for Star Tours before C-3PO took over. And he had this great little line in there, it was like, hey, sorry, it's just my programming. It was a lot of fun. And he's now the DJ at Oga's Cantina. And every once in a while, you'll have Oga shouting in the background. And it's a really cool experience. You should check out Oga's Cantina with us. And trust me, we're gonna bring you along too. We might even do a little bit of a live presentation while we go into Oga's one of our times. Another thing that I'm doing again is because I'm a glutton for punishment, but also because it was such a spine tingling experience is I'm going to do Savi's workshop again. Savi's workshop, where you build the custom lightsaber is amazing. I built a lightsaber in Savi's workshop. I also have a video documenting that entire experience and you should check that out. But the one thing that I'm gonna recommend that I did again, and I'm hoping that I don't end up with the same issue that happened the last time, is that I scheduled mine for after park close. So if you schedule your Savi's workshop for after park close, you are still behind the gate after park close. You are still in Galaxy's Edge after park close you can take your freshly built lightsaber and take a picture in front of the Millennium Falcon. And I'm really excited about this. I'm hoping the same thing doesn't happen last time. Last time, it was pretty awesome. Don't get me wrong. I thought it was actually really cool. Last time they were doing this event where they actually had a bunch of cast members out taking a photo with their lightsabers and they had the Millennium Falcon area blocked off and I couldn't get back there to do my shot with the Millennium Falcon and my new lightsaber. That's one of the reasons I want to do it again. But the second reason is the experience is incredible and I want another custom built lightsaber because I am ridiculous. And I know they're expensive, but I actually saved up for a second one specifically because the experience itself was so much worth the amount of money you pay and you get to take that awesome keepsake home. Also, I have so many of the Kyber crystals, I need somewhere else to store them. I actually have a great short where I run through all the different colors. The only Kyber crystal I haven't found yet is the black one. So I'm gonna try to get myself one of those while I'm there, but those are really elusive and hard to get. The next thing that Michelle and I are doing is we're actually going to try the Ohana's 
breakfast. Now, this is, that's semi-new. We've been to Ohana, we've had the dinner, but we're, and we love the experience, but we're gonna actually do that. We actually have a dinner as well, but we're actually gonna try the Ohana breakfast. We've heard so many great things about that pineapple bread and everything else that goes with that breakfast that we were like, hey, we are staying in the Polynesian. Maybe we should just have breakfast there one day. And I was actually able to get a Polynesian breakfast on the very last day of our trip, right before we start heading home. And I was like, hey, let's do it. So we did it. So we have a Ohana dinner, which we know we're gonna love because oh my goodness, the, the wings and the noodles. Oh, so, so tasty. I actually had this really great shot that I took on my phone from years ago where it started raining and I did like a slow-mo of the rain. If I can find it, I'm gonna throw it into the video right now. It was really cool because we were sitting right against the window and this rainstorm came in while we were there for dinner. But Ohana is an awesome setting. It's in the Polynesian and it's another all you care to enjoy family style, but they just keep bringing it out and everything on that menu is good. So I cannot wait to try the breakfast because the dinner was so incredible. And finally, the next thing that we're really excited about doing is something that we did for the first time ever in 2019. And that is the Keys to the Kingdom Tour. The Keys to the Kingdom Tour was just incredible. You get to go through the Utilidors, you learn all these like secrets and tips, things that I didn't know about Disney. And trust me, I watched so much Disney content. I was like, wow, I learned something new. And it was so awesome. And our tour guide at the time, she actually cried at the end of the tour. And it wasn't theater crying. It was like she was talking about what Walt Disney himself meant to her and why she was a cast member. And I realized that she was probably the best choice they ever could have made for that tour. But that Keys to the Kingdom tour talks about you basically becoming a cast member for the day. You get to go through the Utilidors. You get to see like the parade floats background. Now you can't take pictures, you can't take videos, so I can't really document it, but I can talk about how amazing it was. And if you get a chance to do the Keys to the Kingdom tour, it is surprisingly cheap. It lasts for six hours and you get a meal either at Pecos Bills, which is usually where they do it, or sometimes at Cosmic Rays, and you get to select the meal while you're doing it. So being able to do all that stuff is just awesome. So Keys to the Kingdom Tour, something we've done really recently, and we're doing it again because it's so cool. All right, we've gone through the old experiences we're doing again because they're so awesome. Now it's time for the new things we cannot wait to try. One of our very first new experiences this year is a kind of a weird one. We're driving to Disney. We've never driven to Disney. We've always flown. But this year we decided we're going to drive. And it was actually becoming DVC members that made us decide to do this. Being a DVC member, you get free parking at your resort. And because we're also now annual pass holders, we also get free parking at the parks. So why not take our car down? Because it actually, even with the gas prices where they are right now, we are still going to actually end up paying less than the plane tickets. So why not? We're going to drive. And the drive from the Philadelphia area where we live all the way down to Orlando isn't that bad. But one of the new experiences, and this is ridiculous, is that we're going to go to Bucky's. <laughs> I know, everyone's going to be like, what? Yeah, Bucky's. Buc I've heard nothing but amazing things about Bucky's. And while we have a great place up here called Wawa, and you actually have it down there in Orlando, Florida, too, we have never been to a Bucky's. So there's one on our route, and we're going to stop. And I've been told I have to get the Bucky's nuggets. I have no idea what these are. I am going to get them because I see all kinds of people rave about these Bucky's nuggets. Here we go. We're gonna drive and we're gonna stop at Bucky's. One of the new experiences we're really excited about is we have reservations for Space 220. I am so excited to go to this place. I, as soon as they announced that it's gonna be like this space elevator concept and they're gonna theme it to the max, the videos and the images I've seen are incredible. A big thank you to my friend, uh, Mike Gaylord, who was there recently. He sent me some footage from when his family went in there. Uh, it's just, wow. I cannot believe how awesome that restaurant looks. I am looking forward to the meal. I'm looking forward to the ambiance. I cannot wait to try Space 220. This is one of those things where it's like, they themed it out, they maxed out the Imagineering, and it just looks so cool. And it's a restaurant. That's all it is. And just 
awesome. Space 220, something I'm definitely looking forward to. Also restaurant wise, I'm looking forward to trying Steakhouse 71. Now, I've eaten at Wave of American Flavors, what Steakhouse 71 used to be. They changed Steakhouse 71 into what it is because of the 50th celebration and the Contemporary being one of the first hotels that was built on property. And so the Steakhouse 71 has that theme. So the menu has some of the old things like the old bacon and eggs appetizer, which by the way, if you haven't had that, you need to have it, it's incredible. I will link it, my Wave of the American Flavors uh, review that I did from a long time ago. You should hear, everyone at the table raved about the bacon and eggs appetizer. So I'm looking forward to that still being on the menu but I am also looking forward to trying like all kinds of different things that are new that they've done in a way that's kind of reminiscent of what Disney would have wanted in a restaurant. And so Steakhouse 71 over the contemporary is something we're definitely looking forward to. The final new restaurant that we're looking forward to is the Boathouse. And the Boathouse is in Disney Springs. We've never eaten there. It's been there. We've been in Disney Springs with the restaurant there. We just have not eaten there. And Everything I hear is that they have an excellent drink menu, it's great ambiance, the service is good. It is a signature experience, so it's a little on the more pricey side. So just to give you that heads up, but the Boathouse restaurant there in Disney Springs has a really cool thing. And here's something really cool. Right next door, they have these amphicars. And the amphicars are those car slash boats that are kind of combined together that go riding around outside of the springs there. And if you eat at the Boathouse, you can get a discount on getting an Amphicar. So maybe Michelle and I will do that and we'll try the Amphicars afterwards because you get that discount from eating at the Boathouse. I think that's actually a pretty cool little like perk that they offer for eating there. And finally, one of the things that we are kind of looking forward to that we have never done before is we're going to try to do the four parks in one day challenge. We have always, like talked about wanting to do it. In fact, I made a video where I talked about what I would say is how to do that four parks one day challenge. And now I'm gonna test it out. We're gonna start the day in Animal Kingdom and we're gonna try to end the day in Epcot, which I think is gonna be our best bet to try to do it. And we're gonna try to go to every park, do a ride in every park, maybe grab something to eat or go into a see a, a, like a walker through attraction, just try to get something extra. And then we're gonna try to move on to the next one. I think that's a pretty cool challenge. So we're really excited about trying to do four parks in one day. We're definitely gonna document that with you and hopefully we'll be able to do it we'll see we'll see but it should be a lot of fun oh one of the things that's a kind of like an honorable mention that we're looking forward to is we're looking forward to that new extra hours that they're offering to deluxe resort guests because we're dvc members we do get that privilege of being able to take that extra resort time and there's a couple dates that happen in there right now it's only epcot and magic kingdom that have those dates we are very much looking forward to being able to do that two extra hours in some of the parks. Hopefully it'll it'll work out in our schedules that day, but we're also looking forward to that 30 minutes prior to park opening that you get for every resort guest, which we've never had before. We do miss the extra magic hours they used to do, but this is really kind of cool that they're doing 30 minutes prior for every park every day for resort guests. And then Magic Kingdom and Epcot for deluxe resort guests, which we happen to be because we're staying in our DVC accommodations. But we're really excited to be able to try those out. Well, there you have it, folks. There is our video on the old experiences we're doing again and the new experiences we cannot wait for. Hopefully something on this list sounded interesting to you. Go ahead and check out all those things we talked about. There's a reason why we're excited about trying all of them. They all look amazing. If you have any questions about any of the things we're doing, please leave a comment down below. I'll try my best to answer every single comment that comes my way. It's one of the things that I actually really like doing. It's it's kind of cathartic to answer all those questions. And we would really like it if you would hit that thumbs up button or press the subscribe button. All those things help out the channel in so many ways. And because we don't like to say goodbye, because we're going to see you real soon, we say, see you bye.